Hello, you are most welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Real Impartation Movement on Tuesday Night Anatomy with Daniel Oppen. Today's section, we continue our journey looking at muscles of facial expression. And there's a fourth part. Uh, remember that these muscles form the bulk or the core of what we call the lip as well as, you know, the cheek. The cheek. And therefore, I'm going to talk about the orbicularis oris muscle, as well as the muscle we call the vaccinator muscle. Now, remember that these muscles will be supplied by, of course, the buccal branch of what we call the facial nerve. And so, without much ado, let's set the ball rolling and see what I have for you today. So, there we are, that muscle over here. Now, remember, this muscle, yes, although you see it this way, this muscle have a lot of, I mean, layers of these fibers, okay? Have a lot of strata of these muscle fibers, okay? Which, of course, you find it at the orifice of the mouth, okay? Covering, actually, the lip from the bulk of the lip. But remember that these muscles, some of them may be running in different fibers. Again, get to know that we have the intrinsic muscles themselves, the muscle which is actually the orbicularis oris muscle proper, I mean, forming that kind of circumferential fibers over here, then some other muscles okay also other muscles of facial aspirin may be blending with it okay so that's what we, we tend to see now one thing that you have to actually know over here is that this muscle actually i mean by way of origin it will be originating from of course you know what we call the the maxilla as well as of course the mandible as you can see the maxilla is here then the mandible is below it now this muscle importantly I mean, because of its role in kissing, we also call this muscle the kissing muscle. Okay, because during kissing, you have to, of course, you know, protrude that kind of, you know, the lip of yours. Okay, so that you can kiss your partner. So this is what we call the kissing muscle. Okay, because now one other thing too that you have to know is that it's deep fibers. Okay, what will happen is that they compress the lip against the teeth. Okay, so that's what they do. They compress the lip against the teeth. Then the superficial fibers, you know, principally, they crisscross in that manner to bring, of course, upon contraction, they bring, you know, this kind of, I mean, lips together, okay, so that I can close your lip, okay? As I said, it will be supplied by, of course, you know, I mean, that kind of, I mean, facial nerve, but actually, the buccal branch of what we call the facial nerve, that's the cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 7. So that's the kissing muscle. So you can see, when it protrudes, you can see that kind of dark face appearance, that kind of, you know, appearance that you see. Forming that kind of core, okay, the muscle which forms the core of what we call the, I mean, the lip. Then the other muscle which you find in this group, which frequently people confuse it with this muscle, which is the master muscle, there's a muscle of mastication. It's coming from the first pharyngeal arch. It is not part of the muscles of facial expression. This is the vaccinator muscle. But we are talking about this muscle, which is the vaccinator muscle over here. Not vaccinator, it is vaccinator muscle. So this muscle is actually going to have, we are going to divide into the actual three fibers. Okay. So these three fibers, we have what we call the upper, middle, and of course, you know, the lower fibers. The upper fibers actually will be coming, okay, from where this area of where we have the, what we call the, uh, you know, the, I mean, the maxilla. Okay. Opposite what we call the, you know, upper molar tooth. Okay, from the maxilla actually, and then it will be inserting, yes, actually, where we have what we call the upper lip. So we can see that the upper fiber is coming all the way this way to insert in the upper lip, coming from, of course, the maxilla to insert in the upper lip. Then the middle fibers, okay, the middle fibers will be coming from what we call the terigo mandibular raffi. Okay, we have the terigo mandibular raffi, and it will be coming all the way to be inserting. Okay, somewhere you can see around where we have the corner, okay, middle aspect of the corner of the man of the lip, okay, around where we have the modulus. Okay, so that is what we see. Then the lower fibers will be originating from the actual the mandible, okay, but actually where also opposite to of course the molar tooth, okay, the lower molar tooth. And it's also becoming to insert at what we call the angle actual of the lower you know lip, lip skin over the lower lip. So that is that muscle is known as the vaccinator muscle. Now this muscle is very important. Yes, even apart from the I mean the orbicularis oris helping in that kind of I mean during trumpeting, okay. This muscle can be called the trumpet muscle. Yes, together with the orbicularis muscle helping you to blow. 
okay so you see that now this muscle one thing that it does okay is that it's going to be very important in that kind of mastication but it's not a muscle of mastication why is it helping in mastication because it's going to prevent accumulation of fluid in the vestibule of the mouth but it is not a muscle of mastication please get to know that because it's not coming from the first pharyngeal arch but actually the second pharyngeal arch therefore helping in producing that kind of facial expression it is also very important in as far as you know phosphor expiration is concerned okay because what happens is that it helps in expansion of the cheeks okay so that is what i mean we we actually see okay so what is going to happen is that it's going to keep food i mean whole food in the cheek you know against the teeth but it's going to prevent the accumulation of you know food in the vestibule of what we call the mouth so please get to know that now one thing that you have to know an important relation which you should know is that you know the i mean the duct of the parotid gland you know the parotid gland is closely related to it it's duct okay we we'll have to run you know i mean superficial to it and then later pierce through it to open up the second upper molar tooth so that's the relation that i mean you have to know so there we are upon action look at how you know so that's why i'm calling it the trumpet muscle okay helping you so that you can blow air in that manner okay so that you can you know i mean play your that kind of instrument that one yes we've seen that is also supply but of course you know the buccal branch of what we call the facial nerve so we've seen it so that muscle is known as the vaccinator muscle it should never be confused with of course the masseter muscle this muscle you know as you can see the fibers run you know almost horizontally okay but in the case of the master muscle it will be running that kind of vertically bulk of the fibers will be running vertically so i hope you find it helpful and that is i mean those two muscles which are important in forming the bulk of the lip being the obicularis oris as well as forming the bulk of the cheek being of course the vaccinator muscle i'm so grateful for your time this evening have a good night and may god richly bless you